Welcome back to Black Cat Crypto Club. Woke up this morning to some good news about Solana. So I threw on my, my trusty Solana shirt and uh, decided to jump on and get this video made. Now guys, there is also some uh, news about some things going on with Bitcoin and a bit about Ethereum and their ETF. So stick around, you guys are gonna love this. Uh, we are gonna get into all of it, but before we do, Guys, this might be the last video that I make this month, and so this might be the last video that I am showcasing for them, Animal Sanctuary. If you haven't already, please go over and consider donating a few dollars to these guys or helping them out on uh, social media. Um, these guys are a 501c uh, nonprofit that help out needy and abused animals. Um, and guys, I volunteer at, at a bunch of animal sanctuaries here locally, and I can't tell you how much, uh, work and money it takes to run these places. So, uh, this is a small sanctuary, um, in Tennessee, but guys, great cause right here. If you go over to their their homepage, you can see their donate now button, uh, their pay PayPal right on their front page. Uh, they also do have that Patreon and you can also just go over and check them out, go over and like them on Facebook or Instagram. Uh, but their, their um, website is the number four themsanctuary.org. And I do leave that link in the description of the videos this month. So go over, check them out, throw them a few dollars, help out these animals. Always appreciated on my end. Now guys, the news uh, with Solana is that Van Eck has officially filed for a Solana ETF. So, Big news there. Everybody was asking, you know, once the ETF, uh, the Ethereum ETFs were approved, everybody was asking, well, who's next? Who's next? A lot of people were saying XRP. A lot of people were saying uh, maybe, maybe Avalanche. In my mind, there was no doubt that it would be Solana. Now, however, <laughs> it is very special speculative that these will be approved. I am not so sure these happen quite as easily as the uh, Bitcoin and or Ethereum ETFs. For one, in, in the suits against uh, Coinbase and Binance, the SEC listed Solana as a security specifically. So that's one, one thing that's going on. Um, but also, uh, you know, I think, I think Coinbase or, uh, yeah, Coinbase will win that suit against the SEC. I'm just not sure that'll happen before these, uh, this filing comes due. So we have the SEC that's calling Solana a security, which is a big problem if they're trying to file for an ETF. Uh, but also, guys, you have to kind of remember um, that the Bitcoin and Ethereum ETFs, especially the Bitcoin ETF, happened because the court case with Grayscale, where the court ruled that because the, the SEC approved futures, uh, Bitcoin futures ETFs, they couldn't dismiss spot Bitcoin ETFs. So they kind of got their foot in the door with the futures ETFs, and then they were forced in with the spot ETF, uh, you know, basically by the courts, which they had denied for years after the future futures ETFs. So the, another big problem is that Solana does not have futures ETFs. 
Now, everybody's saying that that's not uh, a big deal. It, uh, it's not a definite no. You know, there are ETFs that, that can be approved that have never had a futures product. But I don't think uh, we're talking about just any ETFs here either. You know, we're talking about crypto and we've seen very um, hostile uh, treatment of crypto from the SEC and from the White House. So you never know. But there is that political uh, um, debate or political um, narrative, I guess, uh, where, you know, we may have a different president in November and everybody's saying that, you know, maybe that's, you know, this play. And I think I'm going to jump over to Eric Balchunas on X. This guy is one of Bloomberg's ETF anim analysts and is kind of the authority on ETFs when it comes to uh, crypto because they've been following uh, all of the ETFs so closely. But he kind of write, wraps all of this up pretty nicely. He says the knee jerk reaction here is, oh, this will never be approved because there aren't Solana futures. Agree, but. If change uh, at POTUS, I think anything is possible. Just imagine Hester Pierce or someone like that running the running the SEC. So he's saying, you know, maybe if we have a change in president, uh, they appoint Hester Pierce, which is usually seen as pro crypto. However, she was the commissioner at the SEC for a while, and she didn't approve Bitcoin ETFs during her term either. So she is pro crypto. She's very uh, crypto friendly, but when it comes down to getting things done as far as crypto, you know, I don't know that. I don't know. <laughs> I have my doubts. Um, and then this goes on and says, yeah, so not until 2025 at bare minimum. And Eric Balchunas return, replies, probably right. I see this as a call option on the POTUS election because the election happens by the 240 days that the SEC has to ponder. I don't blame them for trying this. Why not? So when you apply for an ETF, you have several deadlines, um, three or four along the way, one at like 90 days, one at like 120, uh, 180, and then 240 or something like that. Um, so the final deadline is that 240 days after filing. And what Eric's saying is that by then we, you know, the election will be over. So this is Van X um, kind of call that possibly politics might be changing in November. Um, and who knows, you know, it, it may or may not be. What'll be interesting is to see if, if there are any other uh, of the filers from, from uh, any of the other ETFs that follow suit and, and file their own um, Solana ETF. Are we going to see ARC? Are we going to see uh, BlackRock and Invesco and all the all the regular players follow suit and pile in on these these filings, or is Van Eck just going to go it alone? Be interesting to watch. Um, another thing, guys, we do have the Ethereum ETFs that are coming to be approved and start trading any day now. Uh, Eric Balchunas is saying that it's uh, July 2nd is their best guess on when we see those Ethereum ETFs actually go live. So once that happens, guys, I have a feeling that, um, you know, everybody's kind of discounting the Ethereum ETFs and saying they're not going to be uh, as great as the Bitcoin ETFs have been. 
I kind of sit on the other side of the fence. I think, you know, with the smaller market cap, smaller amounts of money will move that, that sector. And I think institutions are generally more excited about Ethereum because of the smart contract ability and what it means for tokenizing real world assets, which is really, I think, what BlackRock is really, really excited about. You know, Bitcoin was kind of their foot in the door, but in my opinion, BlackRock really wanted real world assets and Ethereum. So I think, I think we're in for a surprise, but it should be interesting to watch either way. Now, some more news on the Bitcoin side, guys, and this is just adding to the, the uh, sell pressure of Mt. Gox and uh, the German government that seized a bunch of Bitcoin. This just kind of adds to that. Um, it says the U.S. government moves millions in Bitcoin to Coinbase. The U.S. government moved uh, over 240 million worth of seized Bitcoin to Coinbase, stoking fears it may sell some of its massive Bitcoin reserves and cause downward price pressure. And where do I start with this? <laughs> If you guys saw my video, uh, my previous video, I talked about Mt. Gox and the German government selling. Um, but just like Mt. Gox, this uh, U.S. government owning Bitcoin, what they did was they seized a bunch of Bitcoin from uh, one of the Silk Road busts um, several years ago. But this has been another thing, just like Mt. Gox, that has been held over our head for some time. It wasn't, it was probably five or six months ago, there was big news about this as well. And the government came out and made a public statement saying that they were going to sell some of their Bitcoin. And I don't know if they ever did. I don't know if this is just that coming to fruition or if they if they did sell that last time, you know, several months ago. And now this is more that they're selling. But either way, um, when it comes down to it, it really shows some pretty big hypocrisy, if you want to think about it, because, guys, they are using Coinbase. And the government is suing Coinbase and saying that they're more or less criminals for offering unregistered securities. So, you know, they're they're going after them for for breaking the law, but we definitely want to use your services. Just uh just a bit of hypocrisy there, but guys, like I said, this has been held over our heads for so long that this is just like Mt. Gox, you know, it's like, get rid of it already. Like at this point, it's just like Mt. Gox in that it's a big market manipulation, in my opinion. And honestly, this isn't them selling, you know, this just spooked the markets yesterday just on them moving this Bitcoin. So again, guys, <laughs> I, I honestly think this is kind of market manipulation, but if they're going to sell it, I want them to get it, get it out and get it done and get rid of it. Honestly, I, I've said this for a while. I don't like the, the government owning our Bitcoin anyways. So sell it back to us, please. In my opinion, I don't think, I think this is very short term sell pressure if they do sell it. Uh, but like I said, again, they've, they've been doing this for so long and, you know, anytime they move any amount of Bitcoin, anytime the government moves any amount of Bitcoin, the market reacts. So just like Mt. Gox. Now on to the last bit of news, guys, we have. Uh, this Friday, we have renewed bullishness expected after Bitcoin 
and Ethereum's 10 billion uh, options expiry. So we have $10 billion in options that expire on Friday. And we haven't seen this level of options and open interest, um, I believe, since probably 2021. And back then, back in 2021, it was like every, every quarter we were having massive options expire and guys it does bring some volatility because these options expire and there's all of a sudden liquidity that needs to go somewhere and volume spikes and so it's it's kind of <laughs> it's kind of a crazy day or two around these expiry expirations um so i would expect some some moves either up or down um, in the next few days. A lot of these, um, these articles are saying that this is bullish, uh, but, you know, honestly, this could go either way or it could go both. You know, we could see a quick drop initially, and then once that liquidity starts re-entering the market, you know, things, things go up or the vice versa, you know. So... Anyways, Friday should just be a, a, a data kind of watch <laughs> or not. You know, if you if you don't like the volatility, just shut your shut your trade view off for that day and go out and touch some grass and just hope for the best. So um, let's see. There was one other thing I was going to say. Oh, uh, GDP came came in today and uh, came in pretty weak um, down on what was expected, I believe. Um, so we do have economic reports coming in that are showing the economy is slowing, uh, which could lead to a quicker rate cut from, from the Fed. So we do have that. Um, we, we have some more economic data coming in uh, tomorrow also. So big end of the week this week. It should be interesting to see what happens. But long term, guys, honestly, I think we're, we're going right along with the sideways action that just comes naturally after the halving. And I think eventually we we definitely break out to the upside from this, you know, once, once that having uh, pressure, that having crunch comes into play, we're going to, we're going to see some massive gains by the end of this year. So all of this, this FUD and, you know, the U S government and the, the German government and Mt. Gox, all of this is such short term small potatoes guys that it really isn't going to make you know nobody's even going to remember this in september you know everybody's going to be going holy crap we're at, we're at what <laughs> so hang in there and as always guys thanks for tuning in and watching my videos i very much appreciate it and i will see you guys in the next one